Don't you think for a second, we're a 20-point underdog, we can't beat these guys. You line up and you play. And you play, and when you can't play, get off the field. Get off the field, let's play again. Let's play again. Let's play again. A year ago, Roberts was the offensive coordinator at Notre Dame. Now he leads Baylor into the 97 season here in Waco, Texas. But it is not an easy opener. You see, the Baylor Bears are opening against the Miami Hurricanes. And it will take everything they've got to stay in this game. Well, good afternoon and uh, welcome, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger. So many changes this year with college football. We just saw one. Dave Roberts is down here at Waco. I got a new partner. The coach Dick Vermeil is up getting the Rams ready. And my new man stuck it in the end zone in the NFL better than 250 times. No man could throw it any better than Dan Fouts did with the San Diego Chargers. We certainly hope he can talk as well as he threw, folks. The Hall of Famer, Dan, welcome aboard. Nice to have you with us. And uh, for your first road trip, you drew Miami in the humidity, but it was some practice down there. Probably. Yeah, it was, and a uh, nice hat, Brent. So I could use one myself in this heat. But yeah, the Miami team, no question about it, the same team as far as talent's concerned. We're going to see today if Butch Davis can bring his team back to that national prominence, and we're going to see if Ryan Clement, his quarterback, can become one of those great Miami quarterbacks. We know they've got talent. Wide receivers loaded, but tight end and running back also will be a big part of the offense. All right, so coming up, we've got Miami against Baylor. But there's a lot of other breaking stories around college football. And right now, let's send you to our colleague in New York, John Saunders. John, nice to be back. Brandy presents college football from Waco, Texas, Baylor and Miami. And just a short time ago, third-year coach Butch Davis inside the Hurricane locker room talking to his players. Hey, I'm going out. All the things you've done now for the last three weeks. Hurricane football indeed. How good is this year's edition? The coaches believe it is better than a year ago. And if it's much better, they will wind up contending again for a national championship. Meanwhile, as far as Baylor is concerned, as they get ready to kick it off here to start this game, well, they just hope to establish something with Matt Bryant, the barefooted one, kicking it off. a developing story with both these teams. Let's go to Jack Aroon quickly. Well, Brent, surprisingly, there's a lot of suspensions underway this week in Baylor and in Miami. Take a look at this graphic. You look at all these players on the Baylor side, it's for a telephone credit card problem. Jamie German awaiting the, the ruling from the NCAA about his eligibility. The other two players, they broke team rules. Butch Davis suspended him for one game. A concern, why? Because it's over 100 degrees down here. You can will quick. At 100 degrees, you'd better have depth. Both teams are concerned about their depth. Jack, and we have an injured Miami player down here on the opening kickoff. So he's being tended to. And Miami, again, will have the opening possession of this game in Waco, Texas, as Nelson Rodriguez receives medical attention on that kickoff return. Let's take a look at this Miami team. Richard Mercier from Montreal, one of the mainstays of an offensive line that'll come together. This line should get better and better as the season proceeds. Now, here are some great developing stories. Jamie German's not here. Magic Benton must sit out one quarter. So Daryl Jones from nearby Dallas, about 80-some miles away, out of Carter High School, he draws a start here today. Brian Clement, of course, the very talented quarterback from Denver, Colorado, number 16, and Daryl McMillan is their very talented tailback. 
Uh, Dan, your feeling about De Clement as you watched him in practice? I think he's really ready to uh, bust out and have one of those Miami quarterback type of years. He has the talent around him, and he knows that uh, there's a legacy here. Obviously, they've had some of the great quarterbacks of all time in college football, and he wants to join them. But he knows that to join them, that he has to uh, play in a championship game or at least play in a game that decides who goes on to win the national championship. Well, we hope that Rodriguez recovers quickly and uh, even returns. You know, interesting to listening game. to Butch Davis in his pep talk. You can tell he's still got that defensive mentality, though. He didn't say anything about uh, catching the ball, running for touchdowns. He was talking about swarming and sticking and hitting. <laughs> Clement now coming up for Butch to the line of scrimmage with the first offensive play from scrimmage of this game. Ball about at the 19-yard line for the Canes. Tight end is over to the left, and they're going to throw right away. They get one-on-one, -on -one incomplete, and Omar Roll drops the ball coming out of bounds, and it'll be second and ten against this defense, which escapes one there as the ball is dropped. The Baylor defense, well, it must come together. They must develop especially some talented defensive ends as they switch from the 3-4 to the 4-3 down here. Kenyatta Parker, probably the most talented linebacker, starts on the outside. When they go to the nickel and dime, he'll be the middleman. And Cody, the free safety, the center fielder, he is going to be very, very busy today, folks. Standing back there at the 35. Second and 10 for Clement at Miami. They use motion to influence the play. They run their tailback right straight ahead. And McMillan is stopped after picking up about three yards on the play. That was Cody coming up from free safety to help Littleton on the stop. And both on first and second down, the Canes come out with two tight ends. That time as Mondrill Fulcher was the second tight end. And uh, we'll play action on first down, and then they give it to McMillan. But McMillan uh, will be joined in the backfield. He'll get a, a tough first couple of series, and then Edward James will take over. A lot of talent throughout this entire offense, especially at the skills position. Here's third and seven for the Canes. Clement back, time, first down at the 47-yard line going to a motion receiver as Henderson comes up and makes the stop. And you can see that Jones took a big hit on the play. That's Chris Jones. See the tight end uh, clearing in the middle, then the second tight end hits the post right down the middle. Uh, this is, looks a lot like the Dallas Cowboy offense because what you get here, uh, you get these big tight ends trying to emulate a Jay Novacek type of athlete. and. A big completion down the middle. Roberts must be concerned because there was one drop ball with a wide open receiver, too. And they pound back with McMillan. Good stop by Parker. Kenyatta Parker, number 37. And the Baylor coaches are very high on this young man. Word from the bench on Rodriguez, sprained ankle. We'll see whether or not he's able to return a little bit later in the game. So how do you stop all this talent? Well, what they want to do, the Baylor Bears want to crowd that line of scrimmage, put eight men up and hit the quarterback as often as possible. They feel if they can knock Clement down in the first three quarters and in the fourth quarter, he may not be as accurate. Darrell Jones, the freshman from Dallas, is split wide out to the right-hand side, but they are content to look for daylight outside with McMillan, and he slipped as Robert Neal, the corner on that side. So they're trying to put pressure on the defensive backs, try to get them isolated with some of their running game here early and just see what they're up against today. A lot of scouting going on early, Mr. Fouch. Well, the biggest problem for Miami in scouting Baylor is they're really not sure, either offensively or defensively, what scheme they're going to be in. New coaching staff for Dave Roberts here uh, in Waco. It's Rodriguez getting 10-2 and two on the sidelines. Not a good way to start uh, your season, spraining your ankle on the opening kickoff. Second, third down for Clement. This one, he needs five yards. A wide receiver wide open for a first down earlier. Three-step drop, fires, and another ball is dropped. This time, roll again. That was going to be very close to a first down. I believe he would have been stopped about a yard or two short. Baylor, of course, very excited that they have forced Miami to punt it away. So here's Crossland. Andy Crossland, he'll punt it, and he will also kick the field goal. Into the end zone, and it'll come out on the 20-yard line. So it'll be the first possession coming up for Baylor with the change in the 
offense a lot of pressure on the offensive line they're hoping that David Davis their strong guard he's from Dallas he was a very valued high school recruit down here in this part of Texas I hope he stays healthy Darius Thompson will be the go to guy number 13 Baylor plans to put it in the air a lot Jar Douglas the key man they hope to get the ball into his hands in some fashion about 25 times today if they can and here comes Jeff Watson Dan. Well, Jeff Watson will be implementing the Douglas plan then, uh, Brent, and getting uh, Gerard the ball as often as possible. Start with four wide receivers. So with the field spread on out, play fake, and they fire it to Douglas, who had split out to the right-hand side, and he burrows ahead for about five yards. So there's a very positive gain in this Miami defense that you'll be looking at. This, of course, was hit hard by defections to the National Football League both by those who were eligible and in some cases some of the fellows left early. Denny Fortney, a very talented inside lineman, moves outside. Rod Mack hopes to stand tall in the middle. Miami linebackers, as you know, have always had great speed. Here is another of the freshmen out of Dallas. There are a dozen Texans on this Miami roster. Second down and four for Watson and Baylor. Flashes high, put it right back into Douglas's hands. Coach is not messing around. He said he was going to be the key man. Let him handle the ball right away. It's first down as Dwayne Starks, the left corner, makes the play. Well, he caught the first pass as a wide receiver. Here, this is just a, a quick play-action screen pass. He'll have two linemen out in front. And believe me, to pick up a first down on your second play of the game against the Miami Hurricanes, what a tremendous confidence booster for the Bears. Ball on the Baylor, 34-yard line for Watson with Douglas, of course, the main man in this attack. Using four wide outs, tackles have to hold up. And this time, the Miami defense was ready with about four white shirts there, led by Fortney, number 99. Now, Fortney's really the key for Miami. He's making the... Uh, transition from defensive tackle where he played last year and the year before it was a little bit undersized to play in there going out to the uh, high profile defensive end spot and the one thing the coaches would like to see from this quiet leader is just a little bit more emotion out there be a little bit more vocal but uh, he's one of those guys that likes his play speak for him. second and nine you've got to watch Douglas he is slotted to the right hand side and they're going to go to the shotgun for the first time Watson will dump it off instead over street who had carried on the previous down for a couple of yards. Well, we've got an update. Let's go to John Saunders in New York. John? Brent, we told you Syracuse and NC State headed to overtime. Syracuse with the first possession. Donovan McNabb rolls out and finds Roland Williams wide open in the end zone, 18 yards. They score first. Right now, NC State is on the 13-yard line in their first possession. Skip Hicks. 93 yards on a carry that set up a touchdown. UCLA leading Washington State 7-zip. Keep us up to date on what the Wolfpack comes up with in that overtime game. Here, Baylor, Miami scoreless. Watson fires, juggles, caught at the 49 midfield as the ball was handled and it was getting away from Morris Anderson, number nine, one of their wide receivers that time. But there was plenty of space for that wide receiver. Roberts is getting daylight for his wide receivers in this attack. Uh, he was in motion, and uh, you'll see the pressures. Watson really is a tough guy. He's going to stand in that pocket, and he's going to let it rip. He played a little linebacker in high school. He played a little quarterback. But the one thing that uh, the first adjective they used on Watson, he's a tough kid. This time they go to a conventional eye set on first down, and Miami ate Douglas up. And that was Fortney coming across to make the stop for the loss. And Watson is going to have to be tough today because this uh, front four and the entire defense of Miami will put a lot of pressure on him throughout the day. This is a heck of a job by Fortney taking the inside gap. You see him number 99 right there. And he stuffs Douglas for about a three-yard loss. Miami's best play so far on defense. Second down and 13. Watson, incidentally, has completed his first four passes and certainly figures to be firing here. Split back, so Baylor has featured one look after another. Three wide outs with a slot man over the right-hand side. And Watson wants to hit him right the way. Outside, missed tackle. They put it back in Morris Anderson's hands as he crosses the 45-yard line short of the first. Number nine, Morris Anderson. 
looked like Dwayne Starks was going for the interception as he read the three-step drop by Watson. He broke on the ball, number 23, as Starks, top of the screen there. And watch as he looks right at the quarterback, breaks for the interception and just misjudges it. Watson now five of five as he comes up. Needs three yards for the first down at the 40-yard line. Puts Anderson in motion this time over the short side of the field. An offset eye look. Now they move the fullback over, and he's basically a wingback, and Miami ate Douglas up that time. Not to be fooled is Denny Fortney. He is off to a huge game here. The tackle is having a lot of trouble handling Fortney. Without a tight end out there a lot of times, it's one-on-one. -on -one. The last two carries, he's been stuffed in the backfield here. He called it, uh, Brent, that tackle. Actually, that's the tight end that time, Bradley Domel trying to block Fortney, didn't get the job done. Kyle Atterbury in to punt. This is the first punt for Baylor. Wayne Starks needs to receive. Advantage Baylor, if nothing else, with Starks back set to receive this punt. He's going to let it go on in toward the end zone, and it'll come out on the 20-yard line. What I was saying, advantage Baylor, Atterbury's simply because punt. They've run the clock down to 6.55. Miami has handled the ball only once, and they have nothing to show for it. But it is early. We'll be right back. Long ago, an inventor came up with the assembly line, allowing a few people to make a lot of something. It was the model for efficiency. Coordinator of the Dallas Cowboys, and then went on down to Miami. He's done a wonderful image job down there, and also has uh, shaped things up with the Miami program. Jamie German, as you know, is not here. That's because of an old lingering case. And he will not be able to play, apparently, for a couple of games, although they won't know for certain until next week. On the first play, a bit of a delay, and that is McMillan, who has been operating there at that running back. And let's go down to Jack Aru, Jack. Brett, that defensive hold by the Baylor Bears was good news for Ty Smith. You know, he said with all the injuries they've had, they need this game to find out what type of defense they've got. They've only run 30, counted 30 full contact plays. The first thing Ty showed the team when they came off the field, let's go Bears, we can win. He's very pleased thus far. But it's a long war of attrition going on in this heat down here in Central Texas today. Wind blowing against Clement and Miami at about 15 to 20 miles an hour gusting. Clement again showing pass and then on the delay and this time Williams runs for a first down. Gained about, or I should say McMillan, gained about 12 yards on that run. Very talented running backs down here in Miami. It's just a question of how many times Nick Williams, Carlo Joseph, Edger and James will handle the ball along with McMillan. Omar Roll's been having a tough time catching the ball, but watch him come in and block from the right side of the screen. Right there, he pushes the defensive back away. Rodney Smith, number 14, and that gives McMillan room enough to get the first down. So he also did not start that series. They came in with both freshman receivers, so Roll uh, got the message from the coach, obviously. On first down from the Miami 34-yard line. Three-step drop, Clement fires in space. This time, Roll hangs on, cuts back, now works his way back toward a first down. Near 10-yard gain that time, and Robert Neal defending the play. Well, looking ahead to Monday night, the NFL with its earliest season opener ever coming up on Sunday, our friend Dick Vermeil hopes to have the Rams ready. And then on Monday night on ABC, I survived a disaster, hoping to survive another disaster, the Chicago Bears. They're up in Green Bay for that opener against the defending Super Bowl champion, Green Bay Packers, 9 Eastern. Here it is, first down and 10, as Roll did reach out for the first down. Ball at the 45-yard line. Clement under pressure, not going to get it off, is he? Standing in and does deliver, inter no! Oh, a diving effort at the end, but it is incomplete. At first, it looked like he was going to be sacked. Then he delivered it, looked like it might be an amazing completion, and then an interception, but it's just an incompleted pass. Let's see if we can sort it all out. Obviously, they don't have in the grasp rule here in college football. Uh, he was in the grass for, it seemed like, four or five seconds. Shows you the type of strength he has and the presence of mind to know where his receivers are. Too high for Bubba Franks there. Look at Reggie Wayne layout. He can't make the grab. And right in between there, Baylor Bear had a shot at it. McMillan, the lone running back. Second and ten. McMillan, first down, blast. 
for 15 yards to just inside the 40-yard line. Miami rolling now. Their best running play all day long so far has been just the lead play. Give the ball deep to McMillan in the backfield and let him roll behind this huge offensive line. Callejas with a nice block there, and then he's into the secondary just like that. Joseph the fullback, and McMillan again, this time springs free, daylight, 30, 24-yard line. Somehow broke a tackle and sprinted inside the 25-yard line. This is Kenyatta Parker, number 37, who is the guy they try to make, let him free up and be able to make tackles like that. He had McMillan, and then his teammates came over and knocked him off the tackle, but McMillan kept his legs going and got a big first down all the way inside the 25-yard line. Shaken up on the play also. McMillan leaves to the far side. He goes out, and Miami will have a first down inside the Baylor. 25-yard line. Edger and James checks in at tailback. He's number five. He's a sophomore. Gets the call right away. Breaks it out to the right-hand side and now runs for the corner. Ten, five, tries to stay in bounds. Pylon, touchdown, Miami! On their second series of the 97 season. Miami pounds it down with a running game, and Edger and James put six on the board. Not a bad first carry for your 1997 season opener for Edger and James. Most teams would be devastated if their first team tailback went out with an injury. Miami scores a touchdown with the backup. Jeff Popovich will put it down for Crossland. He whacks it through, so Miami leads Baylor here at the early going. 7-0 on a James touchdown run. Watch him get the pylon. And so Baylor hopes with the ball. High kickoff fielded. Two yards deep. Great hit on special teams by Miami. An ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Brewery Fresh Budweiser reminds you, fresh beer tastes better. Nicorette Gum, you can do it, Nicorette can help. And Burger King, where you get your burgers worth. Baylor coming out now from the 12-yard line, hoping to get something going, trailing by seven here. They were a 16-point underdog coming into this game against the Hurricanes. Play fake, Watson to throw on first down, fires back, completed the 20-yard line. Nice grab, short of a first down. That was Bradley Dommel, number 80, a tight end. Jack Aroot. And let's update John Darrell McMillan. You know, he came out. They first thought Dr. John Uribe, the chief medical, thought he might have torn a hamstring. They've revised that now, much to Coach Butch Davis's relief. They say he might have a slight tear. Most likely, it's a major cramp. They're going to try and work it out. They'll let us know in the second quarter. All right, Jack and Dommel did extend it up to get the first down. So not only a nice catch, but a great effort to pick up the 10th yard for Dommel. And on the first down now, they will hand it off to one of the running backs and they bring Douglas out of the eye formation with Michael Smith defending number 22 that time way too much speed for Miami on defense so what's new but uh, you can't really expect to run wide in a, in a traditional two back offense against Miami the one thing that uh, Dave Roberts told us yesterday what he wants to do is spread them out try to create uh, areas on the field for Douglas to run as almost as if he's a punt returner where he's in the open field Anthony Overstreet is replaced by Dexter Ford, who's a pretty good receiver. Number one, a junior out of Dallas. He is alongside Watson, who lined up in that shotgun formation. Now 
Watson waits for an open man, almost intercepted, almost picked off at the 39-yard line as he wanted Douglas that time, and Eugene Ridgely stepped in front of him. So a reminder at the conclusion of this game, Dan and I will select the Chevrolet players of this game for both Miami and Baylor. One of the big differences we'll see in the secondaries, Brent, is we've seen two defensive backs now break on the ball. They're playing a lot of zone. They're facing the quarterback, so they're seeing when the ball is released. Uh, conversely, when Baylor's on defense, they're playing a lot more man-to-man. -man. Their cornerbacks have their back to the quarterback often. Third down, and about nine yards to go. Watson in trouble takes off and he is well short of that first down Baylor must punt again that time it was Jeffrey Taylor but it was that outside rush that forced Watson to step up into even more trouble that time so the front four for the Hurricanes does the job and they're going to get the ball back let's just watch Fortney here uh, the other thing we got to watch is Watson he's limping off the field right now and this is why Fortney jumps on the pile and if Watson goes down with an injury, this could be catastrophic for Baylor. Kelvin Garman was not holding up on that tackle spot. Jermaine Alfred has been shaken up and have to come. Atterbury with his second punt. Starks, the defensive back, slips, regains balance, cuts over to the left-hand side. And he'll be down at the 40-yard line. So Miami, 60 yards away. And take another look here at how Jeff Watson was shaken up on this play. Slowly but surely, Miami taking charge in Waco. With the Watson uh, limping around, Jermaine Alfred would be the backup quarterback. He's number 17 getting loose right now, but he has a knee injury. He got hurt in a scrimmage a couple of weeks ago. Meanwhile, first down for the Canes. James stays in a tailback. He has the game's only touchdown. Play fake to him. Clement with plenty of time. Wide open receiver. First down inside the 40-yard line. And this time he goes to Mondrell Fulcher, number 18, one of the talented tight ends. They have got three, perhaps the best trio of tight ends in the country this year, right here in Miami. Well, this is Fulcher 18. We've seen Chris Jones and Bubba Franks already. But they have the ability to reach out and catch the ball in their hands. And <laughs> that's what I loved about Kellen Winslow, that ability to make the quarterback look good, reach out and catch some of those balls that aren't always right into the body. First down for the Canes at the Baylor 36-yard line. Here's James. Jitterbuck step. Twists into the middle to the 27. He looks like he could become a real dangerous kind of runner. Cody brings him down. We talked about Kenyatta Parker being the best defensive player for the Bears. Well, the Canes know about him, and they're going to pay extra attention to him as Curlin Blaze puts his uh, 303 pounds on him and twists him into the turf. A little bit of holding there, huh? <laughs> Second down and two. The game hasn't changed that much, Dan. So you out there. Got a whole lot faster. Indeed. Clement changes the play for Miami at the line. He'll take it off and get the first down for sure. Goes down at the 22. And uh, how about Watson, Jack? Well, you'll see him back out, Brent. He took a hard helmet to the thigh. He came out. He rubbed it out. They put some ice on it. Dave Roberts just walked up to him and said, are you okay? Watson said, yes, sir. He says, well, I'll tell you what, son. We got to run the football a little bit more now. So look for that change when Watson goes back out. And yeah, they'll right. probably run screens and draws now. He's got good numbers, six out of seven. They certainly don't want him running the ball, but get the ball back to Douglas. Get back to that Douglas plan. Miami, 22 yards away from its plan. Second touchdown of the game. Here is James sprinting out to the left. Absolutely no pressure on the corners. Breaks another tackle and battles to the five-yard line. He has had two tremendous runs. Once diving to the right pylon for a touchdown. Here, busting a tackle and getting to within five yards of the end zone. There's no pressure on the corner, Brent, because you're getting great blocking by the tight ends. Watch as they come out here. Two tight ends set. And James just gets in behind Chris Jones and Bubba Franks right there. And he's right around the corner quick. Clement brings the Canes up. James dives for 
his second touchdown of the game. He likes to go airborne, and as a result, the Canes are up two touchdowns to none. Touchdown, Miami. This could become a very painful afternoon for Baylor. Well, he's shown the ability to read the hole, but also the explosiveness, as you said, to go airborne and smell that goal line, get in the end zone. And the extra point is added by Crossland. James, one of those youngsters who wants to touch the ball, wants more carries, and looks like he's going to get them. Last year as a freshman, he scored two touchdowns for Miami. He's matched that total in his first game here as a sophomore. Follow Miami and Baylor with ABC Sports Online. Check out the latest news, updates, and more. All of America Online. Keyword, ABC Sports. Well, Dan, Baylor, if nothing else, needs a good ball control drive here to work on that clock. Keep that ball out of Miami's hands as much as they can. Otherwise, it would be a very painful scoreboard afternoon for the Bears. A question about the fact that uh, Miami's talent has taken over here late in the first quarter. But how does uh, Dave Roberts and his team, how do they respond? And that's a big question whenever you're taking over a new program and uh, trying to establish your way of doing things. How do you handle adversity? That's the one thing uh, Roberts and the staff doesn't know about his Bears just yet. Well, you're going to find out in a big hurry. Down 14 nothing. Douglas again standing back about the one yard line. Douglas runs up. Enters. Now lets the wingman have it. And he is stopped right about the 20 yard line that time. That was Anthony Overstreet, one of the fullbacks for Baylor. And uh, Jack, when you take a look at this road squad, Coach Butch Davis brought a lot of Texans back here. Well, Brenny certainly did. You know, consider this fact. There are 12 Texans on the Miami Hurricanes squad. That ranks them number two in Division 1A for non-Texas schools in terms of Texans. But here's the quiz for you guys up there in the nice air-conditioned booth. <laughs> Who ranks number one? Florida. Matt, I lose. You see, air conditioning does it, Jack. <laughs> Makes you think quicker on your feet. First down and 10 for Watson and Baylor. Watson short drop fires bobbled on the outside. They tried to hit Morris Anderson again, second and 10. Trying to hit him on a quick screen out there, the flanker screen. And that's what Roberts wants to do. He's got to take the heat off his quarterback, especially if his quarterback's a little bit dinged up. But the good news is for Watson, he just has a bruise, whereas McMillan may have a, a torn hamstring. So big difference in the bruise. Uh, you never think that that's good news, but it is when you're a football player. Tape an aspirin to it. Rub a little ice on it. Second down and 10. Douglas smashes his way out to the 25-yard uh, line, and this will be about uh, third down and five with Popovich. You know, looking at Coach Roberts on the sideline, he's rated one of the finest recruiters in the country, and the first thing he might want to do is stop the exodus of Texans to the state of Florida. There's some pretty good football players wind up in Gainesville and Miami, and obviously he needs an infusion of talent down here in Waco. Into the first quarter as Miami puts two touchdowns on the board. Both of them, Edger and James touchdown runs. It is 14-0 Hurricanes. Baylor, 14-0 on a warm, sultry afternoon in Waco, Texas, south of Dallas. The Baylor Bears hopeful that they can rebuild this football program. Grant Taft had some great years with the Bears down here in Waco. They're now in the Big 12 Conference, of course. This is third and four for Watson and Baylor. Douglas appeared to be a little short of the first down with Michael Smith. Seems like Miami always has a linebacker named Smith, and he can always run. That's one thing you can count on. Everybody can run. I think they are probably the best at recruiting speed of any team in the country, and uh, it's been very popular and very, very successful, obviously. 
Dan, this is a team that could wind up in the chase for a national title this year as you take a look at it and uh, watching James run here. A couple of those freshman wide receivers and Jamie German comes back and uh, steps up. The defense gets some snaps. There's no question. The question is uh, their defense and how will it handle their lack of depth so far. This is Starks. Makes his way easily to the 35 and now there is the first penalty flag of the game. Didn't have a single penalty in the first quarter. And here we get an early one in the uh, second quarter. Looks like Marquis Fitzgerald got the uh, clipping call there on the punt return. Big East officials. The legal left in the back on the return. Buddy Ward, the referee, and we'll remind you that we've got a busy Saturday ahead of you. You might want to call your pay-per-view or your cable or whomever and watch some of these extra games. Tennessee, UCLA, how good is that one? What about Washington going into Provo? Pittsburgh, Penn State, Northwestern at Wake Forest. Revenge for the Wildcats. Syracuse, they'll be looking to get one against Oklahoma. And then at night, the network game, Florida State against USC. So it is a busy Saturday next week here on ABC, the home of college football, and the Miami coaching staff doing a job over there on the far side here in Waco. It's good of college football to take care of the football fans in Los Angeles. They don't have any pro teams, so they're going to get a heck of a doubleheader on Saturday. Clement hands back to James, patiently waits for his daylight, and then makes the most of it for a couple of yards. James, things about as we look at the stats of the first quarter on their first two touchdown drives of the afternoon Miami did not have to convert a third down magic Benton number eight one of their talented wide receivers not part of the 165 total yards put up there by the Canes he had to sit out the first quarter he violated the team rule and here's the magic man back in good graces Second down and a six for Miami, up a couple of scores. Clement drops it off to James and nothing but space. Midfield slips down at the 45-yard line. There was not a hurricane defender within a half dozen yards of him when he caught that ball. And you know, Brent, he I mean, should a have just, defender. He yeah. should have just taken off and, and just run. He was waiting to set up his blocks and everything, but as you said, there was just all kinds of open space. He gotta, he's got to use his speed and just get going. I think he gave up about 10 to 20 yards there trying to set up blocks and ended up slipping on the turf. Maybe Baylor could uh, trade for some of that Texas talent at halftime. <laughs> <laughs> First down at the 45-yard line. Clement hands off to James. James to the 41-yard line. And uh, Jack looks like Clement could be off to a pretty good year if he can stay healthy, huh? Brent, indeed he is. You know, he's also got a pretty good lineage. You know, his uncle, Ray Flynn, was an Irish miler and represents Donovan Bailey. So what did Clement do last year in, in, during the Olympics? He was one of Bailey's bodyguards. And he said, you know, it was really cool. He said, about 10 o'clock at night, we were able to wear our shades and talk to our watches. He says, it was all fun and games, though, until that bomb went off. He said, then things got real serious around there. Yeah, yes, indeed. Second down in uh, six yards for Clement. Three-step drop. Fires quickly, puts it into Roll's hands, and he's down at the 32-yard line. Could not extend. Should say the uh, just short of made the first down as he crossed that line, and the Canes keep it rolling here. Already up a couple of touchdowns. And they're dealing the ball a lot to a lot of different players too. Uh, we're getting Roll involved now. James has been able to catch the ball out of the backfield. The tight ends have been involved. And one of the things you like to see is when there is a ball carrier in the open field, the tight ends and the wide receivers are trying to get in front and try to get out in front and then put a block on them. Benton is replaced. James, also a power runner. Along with that shiftiness in open field, he moves the pile to the 26-yard line. 6'1", 220 pounds, and uh, that time 
he kind of dances to begin with, then he sees the hole and then uses a real strong leg drive there. And it's obvious to me that uh, Miami's offensive line is just wearing down the Baylor Bears at this point. Not a bad average, huh? Done pretty well indeed. A couple of sparkling touchdown dives. Here's second down and four. Short of the first down, Dwight Johnson makes a good play for the Bears. There's Dwight. Bears are starting to substitute a little more freely on defense, trying to get some fresh bodies out there. This has been a long drive so far, taking a lot of time. And it is about 130 or 40 degrees, isn't that right, Jack, down on the field? Here's third and three. Bobble and a penalty flag came late on that play. Might have been picked off over there on that corner for a time. It was a uh, loose ball over there. And Clarence Cruz was on it. And instead, it's going to be interference. I think they're going to get Matt on. Anderson, Brent, uh, the cornerback on the outside there. On the other side of the field, you're going to see number 15 is Anderson, and he's working on the wide receiver. Look at all the time to throw. Look how calm and collected that Clement is. And Anderson just there a little bit too early on Omar Roll. So with the automatic first down, and the additional yardage, the ball is moved to the Baylor 15-yard line, where it will be first down. James set deep behind Clement to rise the defense. Changes the play, and now he'll have a split back look. Three-step drop. It all almost picked off at that line of scrimmage as it was batted by Cody, the free safety. The reason Clement changed the play is because of Cody, number eight. He's usually in the middle of the field deep. At six foot three, he really gets up in the air. But maybe showing you why he's playing defense, Brent, he didn't catch the ball. Most of the time, if guys catch the ball, they put him on offense. Second down and ten. Complete. Puts it into Omar Roll's hands. Rodney Smith defends him. Jack not getting any cooler down there, is it, Bart? No, Brent. In fact, take a look right here. We peg past 120 degrees. How does it get like this? Well, just lay this down on the ground on this artificial turf. That's the kind of heat that's refracted up to all those players out there. Don't give me that story. You've been sitting on it down there. That <laughs> rug. Third down at 120 degrees. He's pegging it, huh? <laughs> Third down. Third down and ten. Reggie Wayne, freshman wide receiver, in over the middle. Complete to the five and close to a first down with... Magic Benton, number eight, with the reception. It's so Magic makes his first reception of the game. Well, a reminder that tonight on ABC starts with an hour of comedy. There's your lineup, Family Matters, hanging with Mr. Cooper, the power of one in the practice. That's tonight at 8, 7 Central on ABC. Just short of the first down. So it's about less than a yard to go, about a half a yard here. On fourth down with a two-touchdown lead. Why not? There's the first down. So Clement keeps it himself inside the five-yard line. Clement working behind that huge offensive line and very experienced offensive line for the Canes. They have four fifth-year seniors on that offensive line. And look at the surge as Clement uses uh, his 212, 215 pounds or so. 
easily picks up that first down. Now it is first and goal for Clement and the Hurricanes. Nice defensive play. Tackle made at about the seven yard line for Baylor. Charles Foster is a player that uh, the Baylor coaching staff feel can be an impact player. Here he is getting in the backfield, and that is the best defensive play so far for Baylor. But he's a high-energy type of guy that uh, doesn't always go in the right direction. But when he goes, he goes 100% and 100 miles an hour. Second down and goal. This time for a touchdown. His first touchdown pass of the season as fullback Carlo Joseph scores the third Miami touchdown of the first half. 7.26 remaining. the extra point Miami drives 75 yards in 12 plays they eat up 638 to doing it in doing it Ryan Clement throws his first touchdown pass of the season in this game if you're the Miami coaches well Brent also if you're complaining of a hamstring problem as McMillan is that stretch for the first down was costly for the youngster Dr. John Uribe said they're gonna hold him out they say that it is more than a cramped hamstring. They do not know if it's a torn hamstring. Also, at insult injury, he's complaining of a shoulder problem as well. You know, it almost looked in that picture like it was sprained before there was contact there when he reached out for the first down. We'll have to wait and see what they say uh, back in the locker room. Came down on that left shoulder at the very end there. I'm sure that's why uh, that is hurting him. Turf doesn't give a whole lot. Short kickoff. And goes into the end zone. I think Baylor was hoping the ball got out of bounds and they get a penalty on it. Let's check in with John Saunders, John. Brent, time now for the Burger King update. UCLA against Washington State. What a day Skip Hicks is having. Takes the handoff here and rumbles 11 yards and gives UCLA a 14-3 lead. Hicks with six carries for 112 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Brent, let's take it back to you. Skip Hicks with a big assignment next week against Tennessee. It'll be Tennessee and UCLA in the Rose Bowl, one of the many games which will be carried next week by the network. 7-19 to go, the ball at the 20-yard line. Watson and Baylor trailing by three touchdowns right now. And Douglas going nowhere on first down. That was Lewis, a freshman from Sulphur Springs, Texas, making that stop for the Hurricane. And Lewis is a guy that uh, a lot of people think may become the next great defensive lineman for the Hurricanes. Of course, Warren Sapp, Cortez Kennedy, late Jerome Brown. And the one thing interesting, talking to uh, the defensive coordinators for uh, the uh, Hurricanes and Greg Mark, the uh, defensive lineman, among others, says, well, he hasn't fired a shot yet for us. Well, that might have been his first shot. Thompson and Cogdill, wide receivers to the left for Watson. And he fires back to Overstreet at the 20-yard line, and it will be third down with Jeffrey Taylor, the senior, making the big hit for Miami. Reception made by number 27, Anthony Overstreet. Big thing now for Baylor is just not to give up, just to hang in there, stay with their game plan. They wanted to throw a lot of quick patterns. They wanted to run some screens and draws to, to Douglas and also to Dexter Ford. We haven't seen Ford just yet in the backfield. There he is now, but uh, he's a guy that can give them some explosiveness after the catch, number one. Third and nine. Yes, it is. He was all over. 
the wide receiver that time, so it'll be an automatic first down for Baylor. That is Nick Ward. Dallas defensive back. Pass interference on the defense. Pass it on the defense will be a spot foul. Automatic first down. Well, Nick Ward heard you talking about all those Texans, Brent, and he's one too. From Seagullville. And he's another one of the many, many talented defensive backs that the Hurricanes have turned out. He beat, beat out Nate Brooks in training camp. He's opposite Dwayne Starks, who many think is the best in the country. Interference was at the 30-yard line, short of 15 yards, thus the spot foul, first down. Watson makes the play call at the line of scrimmage with his four wide receivers. Complete to the 35-yard line, Morris Anderson. This looks like Watson expected him to go in a different direction. Good thing for Watson, he threw it to where the receiver was headed. Obviously, some type of miscommunication. It, it looked like he did change the play, and obviously, uh, Anderson didn't get the call, but he did catch the ball and picks up about four yards, which is important. You know, they're not probably going to win this game. What they have to do is win the little battles, play one play at a time, and that's a good play on first down. Second and five. The shotgun option. Runs for a first down for Baylor. So a penalty, and Ford now runs for a first down. Let's go back down to Jack Root. You know, Dan, you're probably right. Maybe they're not going to win this game, but they might win the heart of this man, their coach. One of the things that Coach Roberts introduced to practices was called the effort cam. We use it in football on telecast all the time. That isolation where you have a camera on one player, well, this coach uses it at every practice. He wants to see how many guys are putting out 100%. He said when we started, there was one. Now we've got the majority doing it. They need to give a good effort today. Ford is stopped by a Miami effort that time. Folks, it's great to be surrounded by wonderful reporters like Jack Arut and Dan Fouts. 21 to nothing, and they're saying maybe they won't win the game today. It's wonderful <laughs> to have this great insight into what's happening down here in Waco today. Second down and 10. That's the time remaining in the first half. I'm just glad Jack agreed with me. <laughs> just hope he watches the keys to his car and doesn't get them locked inside. You thought it was your first game you were going to have to use a brick to get us out of that parking lot yesterday. Second down and 10. Drop it off now quickly to Ford. 45. To the 48-yard line. Still short of the first down. That time... Uh, Dexter Ford could have helped out his big offensive tack and tackle Kelvin Garman. Uh, Garman was out in front, ready to lay a block, and Ford just jumped in front of him, lowered his head, and tried to pick up more yardage that way. Sometimes you got to let those big guys reward them a little bit for their effort and let them uh, do their job out there. Ford just a little too anxious. Third down at four. <laughs> Douglas. First down. Baylor. That's three consecutive first downs. <laughs> so the ball at the Miami 45 yard line. See if Baylor can finish off this drive. They've still got 45 yards to go and see how many touches Douglas has here today. He's been stopped from the line of scrimmage, but he's averaging seven yards a catch coming out of the back. But they've also put him out as flanker. Here it's first down. Watson flaring to the back again. And this has been their most successful play as Anthony Overstreet. Powers to the 25-yard line. Good-looking play, Dan. They're getting some mileage out of just having the running back circle Anthony out of the backfield. The well, he, it's a running uh, type of play. It's almost like a, a pitch back, but he's throwing it hot off the uh, defender coming. This time, Garmin does get out in front, lays a good block. Unfortunately, came up, looked like a, with a bum shoulder. As you mentioned, though, this has been their best play, and it's basically just a quarterback reading the defense 
If they come on the blitz, dump it over the blitzer. Thompson and Cogdell are split out to the left side of Watson. Douglas is the eye back here on first down. Ford lines up at fullback and powers right straight ahead to the 18-yard line. There's a little bit of a different look. And they said they would use Ford at both fullback and tailback, and they did right there. This, folks, is a pretty good-looking drive by Baylor. Yeah, maybe we, Jack and I motivated them a little bit when we said that we're probably going to win this game. This is a great drive for Baylor. They have answered uh, three touchdowns by Miami coming down towards the end of the first half now. And they've got a chance to put it in the end zone. But what Dexter Ford gives you and gives uh, Daryl Drake, the offensive coordinator for Baylor, is he's got fullback speed, fullback size rather, and halfback speed. Second down, three yards to go. Ball inside the 20-yard line. Let's see if Baylor can finish this off. They're going to bring it end around. That's Douglas who lined up as a flanker. And he is short of the first down. And a penalty flag comes down late at the 15-yard line as Ridgely is the Miami defender on the play. That hurts. Trying to get it in the end zone. John Saunders, what do you got for us at uh, halftime? Time 97. We'll have the scores and the highlights, including... That is that uh, Coach Vermeil is very happy with Orlando Pace so far. The report coming out of St. Louis is that in the brief time that he's played during the preseason, once he locks up on one of those rushmen, the fellow's not getting too far. We see how he does against New Orleans and Mike Dippers team on Sunday in St. Louis. Second down at 10. Watson off the play fake. First down inside the 10-yard line as Dommel is the receiver. This is a companion route to uh, the little swing pass to the tailback that we've seen Baylor run so successfully. Watch the tailback come out here, and this is Domo coming down the field. Watch as the secondary will react off the play fake. And both corners come up. The linebacker comes up. There's Domo wide open inside the 10. Now a first and goal at the seven yard line as the Baylor Bears get something going in the last minutes of the first half here in Waco. Douglas is the eye back set behind Overstreet the fullback. They'll put it in Douglas's hands. He powers to the three where it will be second down. The clock continuing to tick on down now. Baylor doesn't want to be taking too much time here. They let about six seconds run off of that clock before timeout was finally called. That's a waste. We'll be right back for the final 34 seconds. ABC Sports, presentation of college football. Brought to you by Chrysler. Exploring the new frontiers of automotive technology. What's new in your world? State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Circuit City, answers in every department, low prices all over the store. And Chili's Grill and Bar, home of the Big Mouth Burgers. The Baylor Bears being shut out 21-0 here in Waco. A second and goal from Miami's four-yard line. The split back look with Overstreet, offset to the right. The motion man's Thompson. They put it back in Douglas's hands, and he's short of the end zone. Miami knew he was coming, and it'll be third and goal with timeout this time, quickly called. So we'll take a break as Starks and Fortney apply the defensive pressure. Coach Roberts here with a decision to make. Two downs to make four yards in 28 seconds when we come back. It is a limping Jeff Watson. Pitches his first touchdown strike of the young season. And yeah, pretty good call, Coach. Run the old play fake to McMillan, or rather to uh, Douglas, and uh, let the fullback slip out into the secondary. And Amazing, though, that he was so wide open, you would think that Miami would have that covered. They stopped him on first and second down cold. Everybody knew it was going to be a pass on third down. And here's Matt Bryant. Big 
touchdown going to the locker room not quite as depressed as you would have been had it been 21 nothing and you had failed four times inside the five yard line something to build on Watson showing a little courage isn't he Dan playing on this bump leg well and I think he likes this offense his numbers are fantastic in the first half 13 out of 15 for 110 yards and this touchdown but he is working on a bum leg. His offensive line is doing a pretty darn good job of keeping the uh, Hurricanes away from him. But it's got this offense has a lot of versatility. Remember, he was recruited as a beer quarterback, beer option quarterback, and this is going to be a wide open passing attack for Dave Roberts. He said we want to throw it 70 times. Some of the numbers here. And the rushing yards really jump out at you. Great balance for the Hurricanes and uh, pretty good dominance for the Hurricanes on defense as far as the Baylor's ability to run the ball. But you look at the time of possession, a big difference there. The uh, last drive at the end of the first half by Baylor, they went 80 yards and used up seven minutes and three seconds. So that had to make them feel good. But then Dossett fumbling the uh, opening kickoff really backs up the offense back to the 11-yard line. Watson with a big heart here. Kempe leg came in injured, re-injured. Douglas and Overstreet are his running backs. Play fake Douglas steps aside of a rush man and fires it to Morris Anderson. Let's check in now with John Saunders on UCLA. John. Well, Brent, at halftime, we told you that Ryan Leaf of Washington State was having a great game. It's getting better. Nine Taylor hauls this one in 29 yards on the touchdown. And Washington State has now built a 30 to 14 lead. It's not halftime. Brent. There are some scouts around the NFL who will tell you that Ryan Leaf is going to wind up one of the best quarterback prospects in the country. Second down and three. Watson running Douglas on a delay, and he is short of the first down. Dan, have you seen Ryan Leaf yet? Yeah, I have, Brent. And the thing that they talk about with him, not only is obviously his size, six foot six or whatever, but that he's the best athlete on the team. And that's very rare that your quarterback is, is your best athlete. Take it from me. <laughs> the other thing that uh, for poor UCLA, it doesn't get any better next week. They get the most ballyhooed quarterback in the country, Peyton Manning. Ryan Leaf is a young man who played his high school football in Great Falls, Montana, and then went over with Bledsoe and all those fellows who played quarterback at Pullman. He went over there, and it looks like he might be off to a good start. We'll keep an eye on that one. Here it is 21-7. Baylor with the football. Third down. Going to sweep to the right with Douglas. Bounces off one. Nothing doing. Miami comes up with a big play from Dwayne Starks, who pressured up from the corner, and Baylor forced a punt. That really was a great play by Starks. He, he had the initial contact on Douglas, but stayed with him and prevented him from bouncing off the tackle and getting to the outside to pick up the first down. But uh, Stark shows that uh, he can come up and force the run. Watch him with the hit right there, and then he stays with it to make the tackle. And he stays in the game to return the punt. Here is the young man. Kyle Atterbury will punt it away. Starks is going to let this one. It takes a big Baylor bounce. Still going. And out of bounds at about the 27-yard line. Jack Arruda, I understand that uh, you spoke with both coaches. Yeah, let's start with Butch Davis. He created the performance of the Hurricanes as good. Butch Davis said the only thing he was upset about was that they were failing to read the screen. Now, you know that screen pass is something that's in the Baylor's Bears defense, offensive package. Now, let's switch over to the Baylor Bears. Coach Dave Roberts is very concerned about the performance of Jeff Watson. I said, will you stay with Watson? He said, we have no choice. His backup, Allen, is lame, can't even run at all. So he says, I'll take a gimp over someone that can't walk. He did say, though, if they get decent field position, Watch for them to go to the shotgun to try and give Watson some more time and more runs as well. James and Joseph, the running backs, Clement off a play fake is now going to put it in James' hands. He was the safety valve receiver. And he is finally out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Picks up a first down on a bit of a broken play. Well, Gerard Douglas is really paying the price. Watch him 
uh, get drilled here after he's down on the ground. A little right foot there to the uh, face mask. Officials don't see everything, do they? First down and 10 for Miami coming out. Wing look with the tight end on the right-hand side. Joseph is your fullback, and now they put Chris Jones in motion. And Connor is going to bootleg to the right. Look for daylight. Incomplete intended for Jones, who had circled around to that side. Pass was intended for 84, Chris Jones. A variety of pass routes for the Miami Hurricanes. Certainly one of the most entertaining college football teams to watch when they've got it rolling. Coach clearly in command of that program. Suspended a couple of defensive linemen for the game for violating team rules. He has cracked down in terms of discipline with that school. They lead it 21-7, second down and 10. Here's the draw with James, and there wasn't much there, and he slips down at the 43-yard line. How about Miami's offensive line, Dan? Well, I think that they're one of the best in the country. They have the experience we talked about in the first half. Uh, five seniors on that, or four seniors who, who are in their fifth year, and that really uh, bodes well for the skill positions. I think this offense could be as good as any in the country. Daniel Franks, you've got to look at number 88, nicknamed Bubba. Freshman tight end out of Dallas. Going to be a good one. Benton and Roll are the wide receivers. Clement back. Sideline complete. And driven out of bounds at the 47-yard line. That's a first down. A very generous mark right in front of the Baylor bench. That's, That's unusual. So Omar Roll picks it up with Matt Anderson, the defender for Baylor. Well, let's see, as he's on the deep combat route, and this is, gives you an indication of, of the strength of Clement's arm. Anderson in good coverage there. The ball looked like he caught it at about the 49-yard line. They gave him an extra yard and the first down. Benton and Roll, the wideouts, both very talented. Jamie German not with the team. Due to return circle before this season goes over. James on a little bit of a cutback move. Breaks a tackle. Drives inside the 45-yard line, picks up four yards. Number five, James on the carry. Speaking of Peyton Manning and Tennessee, Spike Dykes will take the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. In for a game that you can see on ESPN at 7.30 tonight. Texas Tech had to suspend a couple of players this week also. So they'll go in shorthanded to take on a very talented team. How's that bear doing? Is he staying nice and cool down there? Finally let him out of the cage. You don't think that fellow had a marshmallow on his hand? Here's second down and six. James breaks that first tackle short of the 40-yard line, and this will be about third and a three coming up, depending on where they spot the football. Well played game by both sides as far as taking care of the ball. No turnovers yet. But uh, the injury problem uh, bites the Hurricanes on this play. Villegas is the uh, man that's down. He's one of those fifth-year seniors we talked about. And behind him, the Hurricanes are a little bit thin as far as the experience factor is concerned. Checking out his left knee. Alabama and Nebraska break away big, and there's the shocker. That was in overtime, in case you missed it. Fans North Carolina State to scored to pull them within one, and they quickly lined up and hit on a two-point conversion in overtime with the Syracuse coaching staff desperately attempting to call timeout. And you, you got to be concerned about why they didn't get the timeout called. I mean, what are the officials looking at? The players obviously have the uh, ability to turn to the officials and say, timeout. Uh, they were playing at home. You think that would help them a little bit, but they didn't get the timeout call and a real gutsy call by the uh, coaching staff of, of state to uh, go for the two when everybody was expecting the one point conversion to tie it up. Big upset. Carlos being assisted off to the Miami sideline. 10 7 remaining in the third quarter. Miami leading Baylor 21 to 7. 
This will be third down and three yards for the first down against Dave Roberts. The offensive coordinator for Lou Holtz up at Notre Dame accepted the post down here at Baylor. And he said he's a few recruiting classes away from being where he wants to be with this program. It's going to be wide open, operate on all cylinders down here when he gets it going. Third down and three, three wide receivers. This set for Miami. Clement getting protection. Can't get anybody open, so he sprints right. Drops off his safety valve and going to go to him. He pointed to that spot for Jay Fumble. Falls on the ground. Miami dives on it. That should be enough for a first down. As Fulcher, the tight end, made the recovery and saved the moment. Not often a quarterback will tell one of the guys blocking for him to go out for a route. First Great job by Clement. He pays for it as Foster drills him. But uh, James makes the grab. Jody Littleton will rip the ball out from But then the athletic ability of the Hurricanes watch Fulcher come out of nowhere and beat the green shirts to the ball. So Kalejas on that far side. down and 10. James again tiptoeing has a running back breaks into space goes for the end zone his third touchdown of the game. Oh what a good looking running back he is. He made it look too easy. Shaking his head after he scores you it's almost as if he thought it was too easy. Hesitating at the line of scrimmage and, and waiting for his hole. Great patience. You see the blitz brought the safeties out of the defense. And it was clear sailing to a wide open end zone. Crossland. And still another extra point. So the sophomore running back. 6'1", 220 pounds. His third touchdown of the game. He also kicked off kick extra points and field goals for that high school team. And it looks like he's off to a great career with Miami. He had a true freshman rushing record a year ago with 446 yards. And his uh, first carry today went for a touchdown. That one went 37 yards for a touchdown. Good looking return to the 43 yard line as Baylor inserts number 29, Elijah Perkins, a sophomore from Port Arthur, Texas. The first time he's touched the ball today and he by far has given Baylor the best return man of the game. Well, he's taken Douglas' spot as a deep man. He is the backup running back as well. And, uh, obviously, this is the type of play that Baylor Bears need. They, they just feel better about themselves and better about their chances today. Elijah Perkins with a great return. Now Watson. Speaking of Douglas, he is in the eye formation. Jared, number 22, gets the call. Picks his way to the 47-yard line. And Denny Fortney, number 99, still active down there defensively for the Hurricanes. Marshall puts on a pretty good show as they are welcomed this year to the big leagues. And that's good news for the University of Montana, huh? It sure is. I was about to say the Grizzlies are very happy that they moved out of the division. I don't have to compete with them for the uh, title this year. Time in the third quarter, 28-7. Miami with the lead, Baylor with the ball. And under pressure, steps away from it from the right, deflected incomplete. Fortney was giving strong chase that time defensively and deflected the ball, playing a whale of a football game. He really is. And, and after the he knocked the ball up in the air, he didn't know where it was. And watch as he'll pursue Watson. After getting away from the block of the tight end Domel, watch him push Watson out of bounds. Make sure that Watson doesn't catch the pass. 
Third down and six with Morris Anderson bringing the play in from the Baylor sideline. Most of the plays are signaled in, although occasionally they will shuttle one in with a receiver as they did that time. Watson's going to swing the pass out to the outside. They're going to put it in Perkins' hands. After that nice return, the coach has said, let's take a look at him from scrimmage, but he is short of the first down. That's the problem with that type of play. If you don't get perfect blocking and you don't, you don't fool the defense just a little bit, you still have to make a lot of yards running the ball. Basically, that was a running play. It's a screen pass. You got Isom out in front, but uh, Douglas just had too far to go to pick up the first down. Kyle Atterbury back in to punt. And Starks set to return. Starks will show up, I imagine, on a few All-American teams late this fall. Good defensive back. High punt. Gonna let this one go on into the end zone and come out in the 20. Good judgment and good maneuver back there by Starks as he made it look like he was going to make the catch. Slow up that defender just a little bit. 28-7, Miami leads Baylor and Waco. Ball brought to you by Ford Taurus. More of what America wants in an automobile. Nike and National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. Miami on the go here in Waco, 28-7 over the Baylor Bears, and their backup quarterback, Scott Covington, steps in, relieves Ryan Clement here in the second half of this ball game, and James Jackson, the freshman running back, gets his first carry from scrimmage with Cruz making the stop for the Bears. And at fullback is Nick Williams. Uh, shows you the type of depth the Hurricanes have. Williams, 6'2", 270 at fullback. Very effective running the ball this year. Yeah, if things break right, and there are no injuries down there in Miami, and of course they've got a big one in a, in a short while against Florida State. You've got to win the state of Florida to win the national championship anymore as they come right on back with James Jackson. When people ask you who's going to win the title this year, the first thing you got to ask him is who's going to win the state of Florida. Then you get a start on. Benny Channel. Florida Gators. Gators. Yeah. What's uh, Steve's upset because his quarterback's playing a little baseball? Though? His quarterback, uh, Johnson, played a little baseball. And then he came to training camp and didn't quite make the required number of laps for the 12-minute run. And, uh, boy, one thing you don't want to do is tick off Steve Spurrier before the regular games even get started. He'd be throwing that golf hat around in practice. <laughs> Edger and James for Miami was the first back to score three touchdowns in the game since Daniel Ferguson did it back in 95 against Baylor. Let's show you what the, uh, the network folks have got planned for tomorrow night here on ABC. They're coming into that season pretty soon, huh? Sabrina, the Teenage Witch. Recess, America's Funniest Home Videos and Dangerous Indiscretion. That's your lineup tomorrow night on the network. Second down and three. A lot of talented freshmen on this team. One of them right there just took a lick. Welcome to the big time. Michaud, another freshman, number 45, came up and gave an old bear hug right there. Shades of Mike Singletary, the great linebacker of the Chicago Bears and alumnus of Baylor. That's the way you teach him. Drill him right in the chops. And then get up and let everybody know you made the tackle. Got to work on that Singletary glare there a little bit, though. You know, he's got to <laughs> bend down, get set, stare in. 28-7. Needs bigger eyeballs. <laughs> Benton Roll and Reggie Wayne, the freshman, are the three wideouts here for Covington on this third down. Deep drop, incomplete. Trying to hit Chris Jones, the tight end, who was running a crossing pattern that time, and Jason Jackson, the Baylor defender. So Miami will punt it away with Andy Crossland, who doubles up as their punter and their place kicker. Douglas will see if he can return a punt for him. Takes a big Miami hop down inside the 15, inside the 10-yard line. 
A beautiful punt by Crossland. Butch will be happy about that. 440 left in the third. His Hurricanes lead it 28 to 7. Out on the field to play. We got to get you jacked up for it. This season's over, though. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> I'll get you one good blind <laughs> shot in there someday. First down. Watson in the end zone. Thrown out for the whole thing incomplete. You know, I like the idea, throwing it deep out of your own end, but I'd rather throw it to somebody who runs a little bit faster than Bradley Domel. No offense, but he's a tight end, and uh, he's not going to uh, get behind the secondary very often. You'd like to see Charlie Joyner breaking free back there? Is that who you would well, like? Well, or, or Winslow, you know. Give me a tight end that can run it a little bit. You keep going back to Kelly. Well, I always did. <laughs> <laughs> no turnovers in this game, though. So we've got that going for us here with 434 to go. 28-7. Is that like saying that says, uh, we got a no-hitter in progress? <laughs> yeah, here comes the turnover just as soon as you say that. Right. What's it going to swing it on out? And that's Dexter Ford. The defender missed him. And Ford to the sideline, out of bounds. First down, they escape. Jack Arun, where have you been? Inside cooling off, we've missed you. I wish, Brent. I did find an ice machine, but I couldn't get inside. The equipment is kind of taken off on the heat. But I want to tell you about the Canes on patrol. Butch Davis, third year of operation out of Miami. He's got discipline, and he's turned these Canes around. Once the bad boys of the university system, no longer. They, they actually participate with the Broward County, Dade County Sheriff's Department, and they spend their summer talking to people talking to them about gangs and you know what for a change they ride in the front seat instead of the back seat of the cop car all right jack first down and 10. they got to be careful they don't ride in the front seat of those limousines too my friend the rest of the year <laughs> it's 28 to 7. miami with the lead good looking football team and for coach roberts uh, there could be some painful games, don't you think, before this team finally well, starts start. to grow up? Movement to the They're map. making a tremendous transition team. from a, a veer type of offense to a wide open passing game. And also on defense, they've made the change from a 3-4 to a 4-3. So they've got a lot of teaching to do. They've got a lot of selling to do of their program for these players. But I think that uh, holding Miami as well as they have, all things considered today, and and playing uh, you know, in a fashion that uh, there's no give up on this squad. And this guy really epitomizes their effort. He's playing on a bad leg, Jeff Watson. You gotta keep the fans cool, too. You don't wanna get them too hot down here. That'll... Here's Ford again on that delay. Into the middle, bus free to the 41-yard line. And another Baylor first down. Miami's lead is at 21. Yeah, again, it's a draw play. You call it the delay, and that's exactly what it is, Brent. A uh, missed tackle there by Derek Ham, and then into the secondary. We talked about Ford having fullback size. He goes about uh, 225 pounds, but he has halfback speed, 4-3 in the 40. Now shotgun over street off to the right. First down and 10. Watson. Middle incomplete, tight end. Came back down and Cogbill was the intended, the wide man was the intended receiver that time, number 20. So the Home Depot Chalk Talk, Butch Davis, defensive line coach there, they won that national championship back in the mid 80s and look at how many standout defensive linemen he had show up and of course the two cowboy Super Bowls under Jimmy Johnson second down and 10 again Watson pressure incomplete and that really wasn't uh, Watson's fault the, the running back Overstreet stopped on his route he was on a circle route out of the backfield and just started to slow down before uh, the ball got there. If he catches that ball in stride, he gets down the sidelines for a nice game. Obviously wasn't expecting the pass. Football coaches all say, Dan, and I'm sure you found this to be true, that a team like this, the most improvement shown is from game one to game two. And if so, Fresno State better be ready for this passing attack because they are the next opponents of Baylor. They'll start to correct some of those mistakes they've made. Here's third and 10 for them. Watson 
comes back to our way short of the first down. That was extremely well defended that time. And number 58 of the Canes, Jeffrey Taylor, made a huge play. They tried to fake the screen to the weak side and come back and throw it late to the strong side. But Jeffrey Taylor was all over it. Watch the fake out to the left by Watson right there. And then he comes out here to try to hit the wide receiver screen. And there is Taylor. Man, what a hit. to the third as Baylor punch. This one will be fielded, bobbled at the 18, and uh, Starks comes right back with it. Now finds a hole, and he's out to the 40-yard line. Dwayne Starks. And, of course, another reminder that next week we'll have regional coverage early, one of the main... Seminoles into the Coliseum for a game against John Robinson at USC. John Robinson, emotional, save the coach's job victory over Notre Dame in overtime. Lou Holtz's last game with the Irish a year ago. That was some night in Los Angeles. And here, Covington still in the quarterback. 27 years ago, Brent, John Robinson was my offensive coordinator at the University of Oregon. I had forgot about that. Yeah. I bet he had two. <laughs> <laughs> he's a he's a wonderful person. I get the biggest kick out of him. You know, Did he's you always, enjoy him as a coach. Always had great uh, enthusiasm as a coach, and and uh, we threw the ball around quite a bit. We had a guy named uh, Bobby Moore. Later became Ahmad Rashad, who uh, made my life easy. Yeah, very talented. Was he a running back with you, Dan, rather than a wide receiver? Second down and nine as Covington's ball is deflected incomplete. He started as a wide receiver, and then uh, because we needed a running back, he made the great sacrifice and, and went on to become an All-America running back for us. So uh, the wide receiver is where he made his name, though, uh, with the Minnesota Vikings. How are the Ducks going to be this year? Well, they got a number of questions. Uh, number one is who's going to be their quarterback. And uh, number two, they, they've had some injuries in their special, in their uh, skill position. So uh, they, they feel that they'll be able to score a lot of points. Third down and 10. Let's see if Covington can move the markers here. Need to get to the 48-yard line of Baylor. And got it. First down. Reggie Wayne, the freshman, made the reception. And let's check in with John Saunders in New York. John. Friend, UCLA trying to rumble back in this one, so give the ball to Skip Hicks. His third touchdown of the day. This one covering three yards. 16 carries for 136 yards, and right now, UCLA climbing back within nine. Brent. Yeah, still very much of a ball game out there, isn't it, uh, John? We'll keep an eye on that one. And 2.06 left in the third here. Miami up by three touchdowns on a first down. Covington hits the open man, Magic Menton, and the Magic Man steps out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Another hurricane first down. This is great work for Covington. He knows that uh, he's probably not going to play a whole lot this year, but to be able to work behind that first-team offensive line and be able to throw the first-team receivers, this is valuable experience for a backup quarterback and a guy that uh, has a big league first-team arm. Good second game down in Miami for Butch Davis and the Hurricanes. Arizona State, the winners of the Pac-10 will go in there after a week off. So on the 13th, that is Miami's second game, first down at 10. And this is James, he's already scored three times, and he's loose to the 27-yard line. It's beginning to look, and uh, certainly we hope McMillan is going to recover from time, but Ryan Clement has a very special running back in Edger and James. It looks like he's just got that extra little something as he comes through that hole, Dan. Well, he is the most talented of all the running backs, and when you combine his size, uh, and his ability to read that hole and then the first to get through it, as we've seen a number of times today, uh, this guy is going to get uh, make it very difficult for McMillan to get back in the starting lineup when he gets healthy. Well, they could be something of Jamie German would step up this year when he returns to the lineup. Here's James. Look how he's so patient. 
good running backs will wait and wait and wait. That time wasn't much there as Parker finally closed it down. But, uh, he was still looking for his daylight, wasn't he? And that can drive coaches nuts because they say, geez, just hit that hole, get through that hole. But this guy has that patience, and we've seen it a number of times today, to where uh, he can say, yeah, but coach, uh, you know, the hole, uh, I did okay. I'm averaging nine yards a carry. Get off my back. Third down and three for Miami. Another third down for Covington. He hit one earlier on this drive. Three-step drop, fires high and short of the first down. The ball was not well thrown. It was too high and incomplete. So it'll be fourth down. Let's see if they don't try the long field goal here and try to see what they've got out of that unit. Andy Crossland, who is an excellent field goal specialist for Miami, and uh, they're going to put one down and try it here. Uh, his career long is 50 yards, and the coaches feel real comfortable with him hitting uh, with the route of 52-yard range. So this is well inside that. Popovich will put it down the 33-yard line. So here's the 43-yard attempt. If it's long enough, all over it. Good-looking field goal by sophomore Andy Crossland. So there's an additional weapon for Miami. And another Texan for Miami. John Saunders, how about Ryan Leaf? Did he come back in Pullman? Brent, without question, this kid is having a terrific day. Showing off the strong arm here, just pumps it to Chris Jackson. He does most of the work. 78 yards it covers. Three touchdown passes for Ryan Leaf, plus a touchdown run. And Washington State increases their lead once again. They are rolling right now over UCLA, 37-21. Brent. All right, John, thank you. Wild run. Does Keith Jackson get a game ball? <laughs> is this the first time he's done a game out there at uh, the alma mater, Dan? Is that what you told me? He's done a few, but this was Elijah a special day for him. Did you see for the better? Here is Crossland. Well, he's got it easy, doesn't he? He just goes out there and drills the field goal, kicks the punch, but doesn't have to do this. Run under kickoffs. Gaitian kicks it off. Very short this time, and it'll be taking a knee, and they could throw a flag if they wanted to on that. I think there was contact, but uh, I don't see one coming down. And no harm, no foul with 17 seconds to go here in the third, and it will be Baylor's ball coming up at the 24. Michaud signaled for the fair catch, which you can do on any kick, and there was contact after he made the catch. So it's uh, early in the season for our officials as well. Jeff Watson. Flankers out to the left. Morris Anderson. And a broken tackle after Thompson made the catch. So he runs it out to the 45-yard line. Ten seconds remaining. Nate Brooks missing the tackle there on Thompson. Thompson showed a good burst after the catch. Seconds tick down. Will they get it off? They will not. The end of the third quarter. It is 31 7 after 3. Miami over Baylor. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and word from our ABC station. The Miami Hurricanes loading up perhaps for another title run. 31-7, and there is their Ballyhooed young quarterback, Kenny Kelly. 
a baseball player. He has already signed with the Tampa Bay franchise. He helped recruit wide receivers. He's 6'3", 190. He's been watching from the sidelines and talking to the coaches. They're itching to get him a little playing time, but they're also talking about a redshirt. Walks in middle, incomplete on first and 10, so it will be second down. You got a flag down on the far side there, Brent. But uh, the people are calling for a flag in the secondary. They thought that might have been pass interference. Talking about Kenny Kelly. So I'm seeing wearing that baseball cap. And Larry Coker, the offensive coordinator of the uh, Hurricanes, says he's never coached anybody that's made more money than he has he's coached in the NFL. And we said, at least not legally. <laughs> and then, of course, we all bit our tongues. Second and, and then, uh, 31 7. We're trying to clean up our program, too, yes, right? Yes, we are. Yeah, we go. <laughs> Here comes Watson. And an extra football is being tossed from the playing field that was down there in the end zone. So the field of play is uh, ready to go again. Here's Watson. Incomplete. At the 45-yard line, right at the point of the first down. Mark Cogdell, the intended receiver. The numbers from the third quarter, and it started to add up now for the Hurricanes, Dan. But again, you see the, the Hurricane defense is holding down the Baylor rushing attack 55 yards now through three quarters and total domination. Anytime you have 20 first downs, you got to remember that seven of the Baylor 11 first downs came all on their one touchdown drive. So uh, the Hurricanes are in midseason form. This almost has the appearance of a scrimmage more so than a uh, ball game. And here is third and 10, Daryl Bush, the running back on the field for Baylor. Watson, under pressure, fires, and gets his first down. Nice run after the catch by Bush, who had just checked in. Let's us check in with well, John Saunders, John. Brent, time for the Burger King play of the day, and Paul Pasqualoni wants a timeout. Why? Because he's watching as NC State decides to go for a two-point conversion instead of kicking the extra point and tying in overtime. Barnett and Torrey Holt, they pull it off, surprising everyone and picking up the victory, 32-31. Brent. All right, John. Beat Wisconsin big one week, upset by North Carolina State the next. Maybe it's going to be that kind of a season in college football. Here is the handoff to Bush, who was stopped at the line of scrimmage by the Canes, and that was Lewis. And that freshman from Sulphur Springs, Texas, looks like he is going to live up to his billing. Nothing like coming back home and, and playing in front of your uh, classmates, your family, your friends. These guys, a lot of these guys were just in high school this time last year, and now they hear, are here, they're playing... Uh, for a huge audience on television and all their friends right here in the stands. Great feeling. Miami will feel real good about this game on the trip home. Get some eligibility restored. And incomplete pass. The crowd hoping for interference. No yellow flags thrown. There is the bad news for Miami, and that's the fact that McMillan suffered this injury after rushing for 54 yards early. Suffered two injuries. He pulled his hamstring on the play, and then at the end of the play, he landed on his left shoulder. He bounces into the line of scrimmage, and I believe this is right about where he, he pulls the hamstring, because as he pulls out of there, watch him pull up. He's limping badly there, and now with the tackle of Cody right down on that left shoulder, and that's two for the price of one. Need nine yards here out of the shotgun on third down. They run the option look out of it. Four, daylight. First down, Baylor on a cutback to the 25. Breaks free inside of the 20. And finally run out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. Good look and run by Dexter Ford, a junior from Dallas. We do have a flag down, and this would be a real disappointment for all the Baylor fans. This is a great play by Ford. Good blocking out in front. 
but then a lot of individual effort. He cuts around in the secondary. He's going to bring this one all the way back. Fortunately for Dexter Ford, it's going to be holding against the Bears. And a fine 32-yard run goes for Nod. But it's something that that man can show his team and say, this is the type of effort. On the offense, the 10-yard penalty, out of the foul, replay third down. That's the type of effort we have to have on every play by everybody in order for us to be successful. So a 32-yard gain or so, you tack on the 15-yard penalty. That's a 47-yard walk-off, would you figure, Brent? Yeah. Ball comes back inside the 45-yard line. You have to reach the Miami 30 on this third down. Watson going to get it that way as he steps out of bounds at midfield. Kemp's out of bounds. And he's been playing with a bit of a banged up leg here today. Now he's competing. And uh, that's uh, the coach wants to see. That's what you got to do when you're the quarterback, when you're the leader out there. You got to put a, aside some of those bumps and bruises and keep on playing. Well, Starks goes back to return another Atterbury punt. Here's number 23, been busy on the corner defensively. 13-19, and Butch Davis and the Miami staff would love to take some minutes off the clock on this next drive. They went after that punt and almost got a piece of that. Fair catch at the 11-yard line. So the starting quarterback, Ryan Clement, his day done for Miami. He did good work, 31-7 Hurricanes. Coaches up above on the short end of a 31-7 shellacking here with 13-10. Ryan Clement, I'm surprised that he's returned here, Dan. Well, I told you this is taking on the appearance of a scrimmage, and basically they're just trying to get him more work. Instead, they get him sacked at the four-yard line as Clarence Cruz rolls in. I wonder if... Uh, Anything happened to Scott Covington if he was shaken up on the play? You wouldn't think at 31-7. He seems fine. Yeah, he looks good. But I guess you're right. I think they just want to get him more work, and I'm sure they didn't want him to get drilled in the back on his very first play. Jack Aru, what's the story down there? Well, believe it or not, the coaches are telling me that this is all according to plan. They had told Covington they would give him some reps, but they had also told Ryan that he would get the majority of them. So they're going to bring Ryan Clement out. And don't forget, guys, they're battling for big-time numbers for Clement. And this is Jones running it out to the six-yard line. Well, he certainly has his competition at the quarterback position we're seeing today. Leaf up there at Washington State and, of course, uh, Peyton Manning. So uh, Clem is going to try and put up some numbers. And I was politicking for young Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> That's who I wanted to see for the first time. But, you know, Kelly says he wants to redshirt. He wants that extra year. And uh, But with the way players are leaving early uh, these days, uh, going into the NFL, especially at Miami, Butch Davis, he may not redshirt another player if he has his way. 11-45, 31-7. Third down and long. Jones slips a tackle out to the 10. Miami will punt it. And there is a Miami player shaken up again. They've already had Calejas injured in that offensive line. And now Wise is down. This is always uh, a coach's greatest fear is that when a game is out of control, sometimes uh, injuries happen more frequently, and a lot of times you'll see a player uh, that's just standing around as Wise was trying to get into the action there, gets leg whipped there and uh, injures his knee. But good thing is he's got those knee braces on, and I'm sure that because of that fact, uh, he saved himself a serious knee injury. Jack? 
Well, Brent, don't forget, when we talked to Coach Butch Davis, he talked about the fact that he's concerned about depth. We talked about it at the start of the show. These type of injuries have more dramatic of an effect upon the Miami Hurricanes for one reason. Right now, they're operating 16 scholarships less than their competition because of the sanctions that were imposed on them a couple of years ago. Yeah, exactly, and they're even more shorthanded today because Pegues and Hall, a couple of defensive linemen, were suspended for one game. Benton was late for practice, so he was held out the first quarter. They're still waiting word on Jamie German, who's back in Miami this weekend, and hopefully they'll get that finally behind them sometime this week, and uh, he'll return to practice. Now on fourth down. Punts it out of his end zone. Douglas at midfield, 45. Inside the 40 and down. Battles to about the 37-yard line, 11-12. Ryan Clement returned for more work. Did not anticipate this. Cruz with the hit. We'll be right back. Need to roll. Dave Roberts still needs some players here at Baylor. And a reminder that tomorrow at 4 Eastern, the Greater Milwaukee Open after the third round. Fulton Allen, David Sutherland. Tied for the lead. Here it is, first down and 10. The ball is at the 38-yard uh, line. Handed off to Dexter Ford to the 35-yard line for a couple of yards. You know, looking at, at Butch over on the sideline, Dan, you wonder if when the Dallas Cowboys someday down the road make another coaching change if they won't consider him since he did such a good job as a defensive coordinator and you just wonder what's going on down there i guess up there from where we are in waco and you, and you just wonder if he someday doesn't want to go back to the end well right now he's going to say all the right things and say he's very happy with the hurricanes but there is something about uh, coaching in the nfl that attracts a lot of people just ask your old partner yeah dude first down for by the way have i thanked him yet <laughs> <laughs> thank you dick for meal wherever you may be and good luck right now he's got charts and the whole thing mapped out and they got the videotape rolling but he went home and went to sleep last night i was told <laughs> this is uh, watson's 20th completion of the afternoon not a whole lot of yards but uh, a lot of completions he's thrown it 29 times First down at 10, Watson fires again, complete goes right back to Cogdell. You hear these certain names and these, some of these players, you hear the name Cogdell, you know he's a wide receiver, and you go, I wonder if he's related to Gail Cogdell. You know, I was just thinking that, it just went through my mind. You're kidding. Gail. No, I, it's amazing that you said that. I said to myself, hey, Gail Cogdell, <laughs> you know, it just... All right, now what was his nickname? hands the zephyr i was close there you go <laughs> <laughs> we're not clicking just yet are we no we're getting there though <laughs> jack -a -root. hey brent we got we can't go through this telecast without telling a great dave roberts story <laughs> about well he actually stole it from grant taffer who is his predecessor here he goes he says into the locker room one day and he's trying to counsel the the, the athletes about drinking so what he did is he took a worm and he dropped it in a, in, a, in a glass of water, and the worm was fine. Then he took the worm and he dropped it in a glass of gin, and the worm died. So he said, gentlemen, what does that mean? And a big old ugly lineman raised his hand, as Keith Jackson would say, and says, that means, coach, that if you drink, you won't get worms. <laughs> My sentiments exactly. <laughs> uh, he's got a great sense of humor. And he may need it. And uh, Miami, though, suffered some injuries down here. This is uh, Jeffrey Taylor. Pretty good-looking linebacker over there shaking up on this play. Uh, let's hope he's going to be okay. You don't want to lose these fellas when you're blowing somebody out. Get a week off. Get ready for Arizona State. That should be a good, uh, well-attended game down in Miami when well. Arizona State comes in to play this team. This team's going to create some excitement down there. 
reminder, of course, we've got our post-game report coming up. John Saunders and Todd Blackledge. I'd like to know from John and Todd exactly what was going on up there in the Carrier Dome on that extra point, why they couldn't get the timeout called, and if they had wrong personnel on the field or what was happening up there. Because that was really a wild, wasn't it? 931 from that shotgun look again. And Overstreet twisting before he's brought down by Lewis. Boy, Lewis been all over the place here in the second half, hasn't he? Well, you know, he's one of those guys that uh, has a... We talked about Brian Clement and all the great quarterbacks that have played here at the University of Miami. Well, there have been some unbelievable defensive tackles that have played for the Hurricanes, and Lewis wants to take his place among them. Off to an awful good start today. Yeah, he really is, Dan. First and goal, 9-10. Douglas Watson fires high incomplete. Well, he had two receivers right in the same line. He had uh, the tight end deep, Domel, and then he had Douglas short, and it looked like he was thrown to Domel, or rather that's Overstreet, and, and uh, looked like Overstreet tipped the ball away. You know, in watching Ohio State Michael. on Thursday night, thinking about youngsters who could make an impact, that Wiley. Number five is really impressive for Coach Cooper and the Buckeyes. Looks like he's got some dash coming out of the backfield. There'll be a factor before it's over. Second down and goal. Douglas, touchdown, Baylor. 31-13. Now, finally, the Douglas plan works out for Baylor. They wanted to get him the ball between 25 and 30 times today so he can use some of this explosive ability. Fortunately for Dave Roberts, it's come a little bit too late today, but again, it's something that uh, he can show to his team on black and white uh, videotape or whatever. This is the type of effort we need to build a program here at Baylor. Matt Bryant. that extra point. So Baylor pulls to within 17 points here. 8.54 left in the fourth. Shakar to the NFL. It's everywhere you want to be. Frost brewed Coors Light who reminds you the three most important words are hey, beer man. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's good you service. Took, you took <laughs> the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> we'll take a yes, couple. Yes, indeedy. One of those days down here in Central Texas. 31, 14, 17 is your margin right now, and 8.54 is your time left in this one. And let's just see what Coach Davis is going to do with the quarterback spot. zone and on out of the side it'll come out on the 20-yard line for the Miami offense remember Clement was in on that last series instead of Covington took the game's first sack an offensive lineman Weiss was shaken up and he's coming back in again Magic Benton one of the wide receivers James Jackson number 21 will be Clement's main running back and the coaches over there on the Miami side, on that far side, they'd love to see this team dig in right now, go the distance here with a little ball control drive at 849. Carlo Joseph is the fullback. He's offset over to the weak side of the formation. The center calls the blocking scheme, and Clement's got his play ready now. He's got a three-step drop, going to go one-on-one -on -one deep, going to put it up the sideline, and Roll can't hang on. Excellent coverage by Matt Anderson, Brent. Number 15 was all over roll. It's the fade route. Looked like an audible from Clement. This is what he wanted to see, man-to-man -man coverage. The ball kind of sailed on him and kind of floated to the outside. You see roll having to slow down, but that's perfect pass defense by Matt Anderson. Daniel Franks, freshman tight end, checks into the lineup. In the third, the Cougars ahead of the Bruins by 10 out west. Conference game. They start early. Pressure, blitz, 
Clement gets away from it somehow and still going. Clement still on his feet, gets it off, and it's complete. An amazing sequence. Clement appeared to be down, and then, for a short time, it looked like six the other way, didn't it? Shit! He got away from Chris Michaud beginning uh, of this play, and it seemed like it was about two days ago. There's Misho on the blitz. He's got to make that tackle. I mean, that's a quarterback back there. Middle linebacker coming on the quarterback doesn't make the play, and then Sean Armistead, number 21, had the interception right in his hands. This is third and six. That might be our play of the day. Omar Roll. Out wide. Pressure goes down the line, can't hold up that time as Chris Sampy, the junior tackle, comes storming in. Big Nine, he got a bear paw on him, and Miami is forced to punt again. Butch Davis may want to rethink his uh, philosophy here as far as bringing his starting quarterback back in, especially with an offensive line, but outside of his center is the backup offensive line. Two sacks now for Clement. Baylor's got the big fella back to return. Here comes Douglas, signals fair catch, lets it bounce, and it takes a big Miami hop. Down inside the 30-yard line, it's going to roll out of bounds at the 27, 7.07 to go. So let me remind you what's ahead now on ABC next Saturday. This is a good doubleheader, folks. Tennessee, UCLA, a lot of you are going to see that. Washington, BYU, Pittsburgh, Penn State, Northwestern, Wake Forest. Syracuse against Oklahoma. And then the primetime game, Florida State against the University of Southern California. Check out another of the Florida Powers. You've seen Miami this week, Florida State next. And of course, Steve Spurrier and the Gators will be rolling, hoping to put together back-to-back -to -back national championships. 31-14 here, it's a 17 point margin with 7.07 to go. And Watson, who's been a gamer, Still hanging in. Injured leg at all. Watson inside the 20. Has time. Snaps it off. And it is complete to Anderson. Close to a first down. John Saunders. Are the Gators underway? And what are they doing, partner? Well, Brent, as you know, they have a lot to replace. Still number one, though. And Doug Johnson, his first series as the starting quarterback. And he's picked by Patrick Sertain. And this one, it's scoreless early. Baseball inside <laughs> for Baylor and a wonderful run for another first down by a spinning Anthony Overstreet. And another hurricane is down on the turf with an injury in the backfield. Rod Mack, the middle linebacker, stepped up and uh, got drilled. The Bears were going with their hurry up offense, which is a good idea. Down 17 with under seven to go. Number 51 is Mack, and let's check out the injury as Overstreet goes by him. Like he might have hyperextended his left knee as the block was laid on him by Anthony Williams, the center, number 57. These can be real painful, obviously but not as serious as if you're hit from the side of the knee. Injuries starting to mount up here, aren't they, for the Hurricanes today? Coach has to be concerned about that. Yeah, it's a big concern, and the thing is, is you can't prevent it. As a coach, you try to you know, tell the players what time to be at practice, what time to be at the game. You try to control their entire life, but then when you get into a ball game, uh, these things happen, and it drives coaches nuts because they just sit there and they go, what can happen next? This is Rod Mack. We've had our tailback go down. McMillan. Jeff Taylor was hurt for a while. Carlos Gallegas. And on and on it goes for Butch. And Baylor starting to show a little spark here late in this game. If they could close to within 10, it'd certainly give them a big lift. First down and 10. Inside the 50. Watson's going to throw that swing to 40. He's a good-looking runner on the outside. 
powers his way inside the 45. One thing you've got to say about these Bears, they didn't quit. They were out of it on the scoreboard, but these youngsters are showing a lot of heart here. They're starting to believe in the system, you know, that they had to be sold that this is what they uh, will have to do to be successful. And uh, you're starting to see that, uh, you know, Watson's getting time to throw, receivers are catching the ball, and they're moving the ball. Time may, may run out on them for this game, but this bodes well for their immediate future. Watson back for a suspension. Got into a little difficulty off the field. And certainly he has been a game leader here today. On second down, they hand it off to Overstreet, who bangs for another first down and still going. Fumble! Loose! Baylor! 29-yard line, first and 10. Anderson scooped it up. And remember what the coach had on that chalkboard before the game? We can win this game. These players are starting to believe it. Excellent effort by Anderson, number nine, after the hit right here. Watch how many times Overstreet refuses to go down. Popovich with the pop on the ball, and then the ball hits the helmet and bounces back to Anderson. Talk about lucky. When you're playing hard, good things happen. Yes, sir. Luck being the residue of skill as a famous baseball man. Said, first down and 10. There's that pitch out of four. It's wide to the left. Surrounded fumble again, and Miami's got this one on the far side. Free ball. Miami is going to score the other way as Popovich scoops it up and dashes down the sideline. How about that? Just when it looked like Baylor might close to within 10, Miami swings the final door shut. And what a job of tight roping the sideline. This is the option play, and here's Ford on the outside. The corner comes up right there. That's Nick Ward, and then Popovich stays in bounds right there. Look, oh, no, he didn't. He stepped out of bounds, and the referee saw it, was going to call it, and then let him go down the sidelines. That official, if I were Dick Vermeil, I would say he should donate his check to charity. <laughs> But I'm not, so I won't. <laughs> but he was out of bounds. That's one of my favorite lines for the coach. <laughs> he was going to make, he had his hand coming up to make the call that he was out of bounds. I love it. Somewhere he had a change of heart. Or no heart at all. Certainly no conscience. Whatever it counts, it's 7 and 5, 43, and suddenly this season's taken on a little passion. One more look. And watch the official right there raise his arm. Start to blow the wind. There goes the arm up, and he oh, no. We'll be right back. Miami on the lead. The first turnover of the game results in a 72-yard touchdown for the Hurricane defense as Jeff Popovich, a sophomore, goes down the sideline for the score. As Mack appears to be all right on the sideline. Into the end zone, and Baylor decides they're going to play this one out with Perkins. He's a feisty little fella, isn't he? Out to the 25. He's looked pretty good. Cool. Back a couple of kickoffs here, 531. And I'll bet you that Watson's not finished yet. Now you call that a 72-yard fumble recovery return for a touchdown? I call it a five-yard return. <laughs> well, we'll see what Watson can do. That's really unfortunate. But the, the, as you said before, that all happened is that the players on Baylor are playing hard, and, and uh, they're not giving up. Very easily could have falling behind 21-0 in this ballgame. Four wide receivers. Here's Watson for the gun. Incomplete. Well covered. That time, Gerald Patterson and all over him with Starks. Uh, Watson, limp, leg injury and all. He certainly has been the MVP. Baylor here today. And then Edger 
James, the running back, off the bench. He comes in, and Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements. And the young man from Amotley, a town east of Fort Myers, has a huge day running the ball for Miami. Scored three touchdowns in this game. Second 10. Douglas batters away to the 29-yard line. Kind of knew that James was going to have a good day. His first carry was for a touchdown. Scored three times. He averaged 8.6 yards a carry. 120 yards on 14 carries. So congratulations and a big game. He wasn't even expected to play all that much because McMillan uh, was the starting tailback. Went out with a couple of injuries early. Third down. Six for the first. Watson. Sidewinder. And close to the first down here on the near side. He put the ball in the hands of Overstreet. Is it probably the only thing I don't like about their pass offense today is that on third down, they haven't thrown the ball down the field to where the receiver can catch the ball and fall down and make a first down. A lot of these plays have been swing passes, expecting the running back or the wide receiver to make the yardage after the catch, really putting him in a tough situation. Possible that Watson can't go too far down the field, man. I don't know. Cross back, or I should say Starks fields it at the 15-yard line. Defender slips, cuts back down to the right-hand side. Comes right up the middle. Gone. Put it on the scoreboard for Miami. No stopping Dwayne Starks. They just play with such great confidence. Starks caught that ball. He was in no hurry. No impatience at all. He let the blocking form. He changed direction, and then he exploded up the middle. Watch how smooth this man is. He makes that guy miss, changes direction, then sees the hole, and then explodes up the middle. And as you said, you can put it on the board right about now. Crossland. Strikes first with a 72-yard fumble recovery, and now with an 85-yard return. It's 45-14. John Saunders. Brent, if UCLA gets back in this one, they can thank one man, Skip Hicks, with his fourth touchdown run of the day. This one from three yards. He's averaging almost nine yards every time he touches the ball. 21 carries, 175 yards, but UCLA is down a field goal. Meanwhile, Memphis, a loser at the buzzer as Mississippi State's Brian Hazelwood, a 53-yard field goal, the longest of his career, knocks it through for the victory. Well, John, if we can get down here quickly with the 346, you can keep everybody up to date on that one out in Pullman. It stands out here like know what's happened. That's been a while. One, and of course, next week, UCLA goes to the Rose Bowl to host Tennessee in one of our ABC games. And again, we got 346. This one long ago over. Baylor for a time. Looks like they might close to within 10. Bingo. Fumble recovery. 72 yards and now a punt return by Dwayne Starks. One of their starting corners. Yeah, we saw Edron James show a lot of patience as when he was running the ball, going up the line of scrimmage, waiting for the blocking and the holes to develop. Well, Starks did exactly the same thing. We talked about the similarity sometimes between running the ball on, on draw plays and screen passes where it's very similar to a punt type of return where you have a great runner in the open field. Now Perkins will try it again for Baylor. Some yards deep. Sideways and down at the 15-yard line. About all they got. Jermaine Alford beat up. Odell James suspended. Just 
about says it all. Watson trying to light a fire or what's left of this baby. And the backup quarterback uh, today behind Alfred and behind Watson is Mike Odom, who's a true freshman. So he's just been in the program for a couple of weeks. Don't expect to see him yet. Douglas. 18 yard line and down he goes. Just Jackson with a linebacker. Seeing some activity there today as the Gators get on the board. It's Southern Miss. So Steve was much happier with the second series than he was the first. <laughs> yeah, that old baseball player threw that interception, didn't he? Yeah, game will ruin you, won't it? Well, he was a third baseman, and I guess that would be an E5, is that right? That's it. That long throw, you know. I know a lot about throwing interceptions, but and none of them, not one of them, was my fault. Second down and six. Behind Ford, incomplete under pressure that time. And again, Watson has to peel himself off the astroturf. Uh, John Saunders, show us that Gator score. Well, Brian, you guys talking about E5. This one was a home run for Doug Johnson. Drops back to pass and finds Jamie Richardson who dances across the end zone and 25 yards on the play. Florida leading now 7-0. We'll keep you up to date. Brent, back to you. All right, John. Thank you. That was a pretty nice ball. Take a look at that one pass, huh? Yeah. Third down. Watson dumps this one off. And Ford is battered at the 21-yard line with the clock down now to 240. Well, we're looking forward to going to the Rose Bowl next week and watching Peyton Manning and Tennessee see what they do. UCLA, of course, trying to pull this one out up in Pullman. That's a wild one. They'll be coming off some Donnybrook, won't they? Yeah, looking forward to uh, talking with Peyton about his game and things he likes about uh, playing quarterback. I competed against his dad many, many times, and uh, that's the game uh, I'm looking forward to. I never did get to the Rose Bowl as a player, so finally I get a shot at going to the Rose Bowl. It's a great place to go, and of course the primetime game is Florida State across the way at the Coliseum uh, against the University of Southern California Trojans. Baylor, penalty flag is down, and this one was inside of two minutes, and the penalty flag was thrown. They're going to give Ward a chance to return that punt over there on the Miami sideline after that good work done by Starks. I bet you Butch refuses this one and just puts his offense out on the field and says, hey, run this clock out. Decline, first down. And a lot of the fans are saying, let's get this 150 over so John Saunders can tell us about that game out in Pullman, that wild one between uh, the Bruins and Cougars. And uh, you and I will hope that uh, Jack Arruda has finally found the keys to the car. <laughs> 150 to go. Let Jones carry this ball. Jump the ball, carry. Douglas and this is part of the Douglas plan. Uh, he did touch the ball a number of times today and he will continue to do so for the Bears throughout the season. He has ability to perhaps play at the next level. The one thing for sure, he certainly got to see enough athletes today who will be playing at the next level. There's his numbers of what he accomplished today. Well, I got part of my wish. I got a Kelly at quarterback, but this one's Steve for, uh, for my, Miami as Jones. Uh, gets to carry the ball. He's another freshman from Burleson, Texas. Steve Kelly, 6'3", 215. So he's going to run down the uh, the final minute here, and I imagine he's got some of his folks in the stand. So it's a it's a nice moment for him. And his first play was a lot better than Covington's first play. Remember, Covington came in, and after we built up what a great thrower he was and what a perfect situation. <laughs> 17 seconds to go in the first half. They got three timeouts. Yeah. They're going to take it down the field, and he kneels on the <laughs> turf oh, to board, kill the first half. Still a good game out there. Everybody back home. Ryan Two Clement, I think he's yeah. politicking for some votes now. You know, <laughs> get, him, get him moved up from, what are they, 14th or 15th, wherever they are in the rankings. They want to crush it, crash into that top 10. 
Yeah, they've done it with offense, defense, and with special teams today. So their only negative for Butch Davis has been the number of injuries. But they have so much depth, and they'll get players back next week. They get a week off, and then they'll welcome Arizona State down to Miami on the 13th. That'll be the next game. Dave Roberts with a lot of work to do here in Waco with this team. As the system's being changed. Very tough opener. Bring the, the mighty Canes in and Jackson, the ball carrier. So we'll run this final minute down, and then we'll send it on away to John Saunders and... Uh, he keep you folks up to date on what's happening out there in Pullman. What a great game that shaped up. It became, at least, in the uh, about midway through the second quarter. Well, one thing Bob Toledo knows about, and that's offense. He was a great quarterback at San Francisco State back in the 30s or 40s. I'm not sure which, Brent. <laughs> oh, he'll be happy to see you when he hears that comment. 15 seconds. He was my first idol. Jackson. I think mine was Paul Cameron. I'm a little bit older than you are, you know? That'll do it. Miami wins its opener. Butch Davis starts his third year on a very successful note. 45-14. Got a punt return for a touchdown as the folks tried to stay cool down at Baylor. It was that kind of day. And the Hurricanes were red hot. They put 45 points on the board. Clement, their starting quarterback, gets the W. And the Canes start to move up in the polls. 45-14 is the final here. Jack Aruth, Dan Bouts, I'm Brent Musburger saying so long. Let's send you to New York. And John Saunders, take it away, John.